Open Adobe Illustrator, go to the Shape Tool and select Ellipse Tool. Go to the center of the artboard. Click and drag while holding Alt to draw the shape from the center and Shift to make the ellipse a circle. Now let's make a copy. Select the circle, hold Alt while dragging down to make a copy while holding shift to keep the copy aligned. Now let's scale the second shape down while holding alt to scale it down from the center. Use the selection tool to move the shape and then right click it, arrange, send to back to send your shape to the back behind the other shape. As I said, you can scale it out or in from the center by holding alt and dragging. Now select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle that covers the bottom part of our ellipse that is outside of the artboard. Then select the two bottom shapes. Go to Pathfinder minus front. This brought our shape to forward again so I'm going to right click, arrange, send to back again. Now I'm going to select both shapes, change fill to none, and leave the stroke to black. So now without a fill color to fill our shapes, we can see the strokes through each shape. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Now select both shapes, go to the Shape Builder tool, and click on a shape to create it, or click and drag to combine two shapes. So now we have two shapes, the circle and this bottom one. They both do not have a fill, but as you can see, the line that was going through the circle isn't there anymore. Now let's continue with our drawing. Select the ellipse tool again, go inside the larger circle, and draw a circle. Click and drag while holding Alt and Shift to create a circle. Again, we're going to use the rectangle tool to cover the bottom part of this new circle. Select both shapes, go to Pathfinder minus Front. So now we have half a circle. Now we're going to select the Direct Selection tool and click on the bottom two anchor points on the left and the right and pull this little circle, this little white circle, to round the corners. Now we're going to draw an ellipse. So select the ellipse tool, click and drag in the direction you want your ellipse to go. And that's it, as simple as that. Now select the shape and drag while holding Alt to make a dragged copy. Then select both shapes, go to Object and Group. I grouped them so when we align to center later, it will align the group and not the single shape. Again, select the ellipse tool and draw a circle while holding Alt to draw it from the center and Shift to keep it round. This time we're going to select the scissor tool and click on the left and right anchor point to cut them and use the direct selection tool to select the top part of the circle and click delete on the keyboard. So again, we have half a circle. Only this time we have an open shape that doesn't have a line to close it. While our half of circle is selected, open the stroke panel and round the end points. Here you can also change the stroke width. I think you figured out what we're trying to draw here. But let's continue. We are still missing the eyes and the ears and maybe a tail. So select the ellipse tool once more and draw a circle to create the eye. You can draw a circle by using the ellipse tool and just holding shift to draw the circle. There's no need to draw it from the center. Now make a dragged copy while holding alt and drag it to the left. Now select both shapes, go to the shape builder tool, click while holding alt to delete a shape and just click with the plus sign to create a shape. So now we have two shapes. 
this one, which we're going to color black. And this other one, which we're going to uh, color white. Then I'm going to group them and make a dragged copy once more. Then I'm going to select these two groups that form each eye and group them together. As I said, I keep grouping them so when we align them to center at the end, it'll align the group and not the single shape. Now let's create one more circle here on the cheek and make a dragged copy and bring it on the other cheek. Select both of them, group. Now we're going to add the ears. I'll lower the eyes a little bit. And I'm going to use the pen tool to draw a line. So click to make an anchor point and click again to make a second anchor point. And then it will make a line between the two anchor points by using the pen tool. And I'm going to make a dragged copy of the stroke and change the stroke style to this um, a thicker in the center stroke style. Now it's time for the ears. So create a circle. Leave the stroke to black, fill to none. Then use the direct selection tool to select the top anchor point and hold shift while dragging upward. Then go here to the anchor point tool, click on this top anchor point and it's going to turn it into an angle. So we have a, a pointy edge on the top. Now make a dragged copy and scale it down. Scale it down while holding shift to keep the shape proportion and Alt to keep the shape centered. Select both shapes, move them over, over, and then hold Shift while rotating to rotate 45 degrees. Now we're going to select this big circle and make a dragged copy so that it covers the bottom part of our ear. We are now going to select all four shapes and go to the Shape Builder tool to create new shapes from these uh, four selected shapes. By default, the Shape Builder tool is in merge mode. You can see by the plus sign. So you click on a part to create a new shape or click, or click and drag with the plus sign to combine more shapes. Hold Alt to delete shapes. Now we're gonna combine all of these shapes that are inside our original circle. And there we go. Now we have three new shapes. We have our original circle for the head, and then we have two shapes for the ear. The uh, outer part of the ear is a shape that has a hole in it, but we will fix that. So use the direct selection tool to select the two bottom anchor points of the smaller shape. Then pull this little white circle to round corners. Now select on an anchor point of that new shape that we didn't see before and click delete on the keyboard twice and it will delete it. Now select both shapes that form the ear, go to the reflect tool, double click on the icon and it will open the reflect panel. Select vertical and then copy. And it made a reflected copy of the ear. Now let's drag it over while keeping it aligned and position it here on the right side. We are only missing a small detail. And that's right, the curly tail. To create this tail, we're going to use the pen tool. We're going to click to and drag to make an anchor point from which a curved line continues. And then again, we're going to click and drag to make a second anchor point, and then ag again to make a third one. And we click and drag it to keep the line curvy. 
curved. So when we have more or less the shape we want, we can use the direct selection tool to fix the direction of our lines. So you just pull on these lines that appear and you can um, decide the direction you want the curve to go. Now I'm going to change the stroke width and the stroke style again so that it's pointy at the end and larger at the beginning. If you want, you can uh, select the stroke and open the stroke panel where you can change the width like you can here on the top bar and the stroke style. But you can also change the direction that you want the stroke style to go. I'm just going to leave it on default. So now that we're done with our piggy drawing, we're going to start coloring our little piglet. So we're going to change the lines that are strokes to uh, shapes. So select the tail and go to object expand. Now I'm going to change the stroke to black and fill to none so you can see this looping up motion. I'm also going to select the ears, ungroup them, go to object ungroup. But first I'm going to select everything except for the tail and go to align, align to artboard, and then align to center. Now I'm going to ungroup the ears, select the outer part of the ears, and the circle that forms the head. Go to Pathfinder, Unite. Then what selected, right-click, arrange, send to back. Let's color. Let's start by selecting the head and changing the fill color to pink and stroke to none. Then we're going to open the gradient panel and add the pink that we just selected and then a darker pink for our gradient. Then we're going to change the type to radial, invert so the dark pink is on the outside and the light pink is on the inside of our shape. You can go here to the gradient tool to adjust. Um, now I'm going to select these two shapes that are inside the ears and change the fill color to a darker pink, changing always the stroke to none. I'm going to fix it over here. <clears throat> Selected the piggy head again because I'm going to make it a lighter pink so it has a better contrast with the ears. All right, now I'm going to select the uh, this bottom shape, which is the body, and just use the eyedropper tool. Click on the piggy head and it will add the same gradient. Then use the gradient tool to adjust uh, how you want the gradient to follow the shape. To modify uh, the gradient of a shape, just click on it and you can make adjustments in the gradient panel or using the gradient tool, as I said. Now I'm going to select these three shapes. Well, first I'm going to select the nose and use the eyedropper to give it the same color as the ears. Maybe uh, make it a little bit more pink, lighter. Okay. Then I'm going to select these two ellipses, select the nose, go to Pathfinder minus front.
Now the mouth, which is a stroke, I'm going to make thicker and then go to object expand. So now it is also a shape with a black fill. I'm going to do the same for these two lines here. Go to object expand appearance. So now they are shapes and no more and not strokes. <laughs> Use, uh, I'm also going to use the eye dropper for the cheeks. Only I'm going to add a gradient to them with a dark pink on the inside and light pink on the outside. There we go. The eyes, I'm going to uh, change the stroke to none and leave the black and white that was already there. I can always use the direct selection tool to make any modification on the anchor points if you like. Now I'm going to select the body here because I'm going to change the stroke, I mean the gradient, sorry, the gradient to one the contrast between the head and the body to be more evident. So I'm going to change the gradient type to linear. And then I'm going to add a third color to my gradient here. It's going to be dark pink light pink and dark pink and then i'm going to use the gradient tool to make the gradient horizontal there we go now it's more evident that it's two different shapes the tail i'm going to select arrange send to back and use the eyedropper tool to select the same gradient as the body and here we are our little pink piggy as simple as that. It was simple enough, I think, to draw him and just as simple to color him. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have uh, similar videos coming up of other animals using the same design style. Maybe a puppy, a kitty, and uh, stay tuned to see. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my videos. I mostly use Adobe Illustrator for my new videos. I also publish uh, videos on my Facebook page, so follow me there as well. Thank you for watching. Ciao!